Hello everyone, and welcome to my visual guide to the new characters event released within the Arc 3 series, Kadaj. This is the latest Lufinia fight to be released within Arc 3, and if you have no idea who this character is, then don't worry, you're not alone. If you do know who this is, then pat yourself on the back for watching the movie. Kadaj is a unique character, and that's putting the word unique very loosely, that has new frame buffs that are golden, which cannot be cleansed, period. Now, if you're scratching your head thinking to yourself, well, Riley, I thought that's what frame buffs are for. And I say, yes, you're correct, I thought so too. But now every boss cleanses these days, and I'm sure within next year's time, a boss will now cleanse golden frame debuffs because the devs love doing that. I digress. Enough about my obsession with talking about Kadaj, as I would hate for him to engrave my name on his mother's coffin. So without further ado, let's dive right into Kadaj's Lufinia fight. We start off with what you think be a straightforward fight. The Lufinia counter is nothing hard to deal with, simply have a debuff on the boss and the count will increase by 2. I'll also go ahead and mention here that the bosses have the potential to stone one of your characters. But I was unable to trigger this by force and testing, so if anyone knows what triggers this, definitely let us know in the comments section below. I can only assume that the stone only occurs when they don't have a debuff on them, but again, if you know how this triggers for sure, then let us know in the comments section below. Alright, now with all that out of the way, no surprise to anyone, these bosses can cleanse, and they do it every 10% HP threshold. You heard that right, every 10%, they will cleanse. Which, to be honest, isn't all that annoying, since you can easily get your debuffs back online once it becomes your team's turn again. You can guess that this was the major selling point for Kadaj, as his golden frame debuffs cannot be cleansed, making it easier for you to deal with the counter for the duration of this boss fight. If you happen to be like my Kadaj here though, which doesn't have his LD, don't think that this is anything bad, as Kadaj still does a pretty decent job, even though his potencies are low and this is also taking into account weakness brave damage and brave damage up from my Paladin Cecil, Kadaj will take on more of a role of an annoying poker than an actual DPS debuffer. Since his frame buffs are always online and his damage is, eh, with that as LD, he just deals little pokes here and there to the bosses, helping me control their HP percentages. And why I would want to keep an eye on the boss's HP, you ask? Well, when the bosses reach 80, 50, and 30% HP, or if you want to be extra fancy, to which I'll say 79, 49, and 29% HP, they will gain a huge amount of brave, typically max brave depending on your debuffs, though they will cleanse, so I guess it doesn't really matter. They will gain also a defensive buff, to which your characters will only deal once. Think of Ultimecia's boss when this happens, so we deal with this by breaking them. And once you break them, your brave damage numbers will return to normal. If you're running Kadachir though, I will warn you that he requires a bit of setup for this, but he can deal with it since his EX sets the enemy's brave to zero, so it will automatically break a target, unless they're already broken. Or you can use someone like Gabranth or Ramza, though if you do use Gabranth, he also does require a bit of setup since he does need 4 or more debuffs on the target before he can insta-break with his S2 ability. You could also gravity the bosses, but dealing 1s after a gravity when they are at max brave won't really be all that effective in my honest opinion. Luckily, there is one more way that we can deal with this. If you happen to bring the bosses down to their percent thresholds at the same time, like I do here with Golbez, they will not gain any brave at all, therefore negating the ones for your team altogether. So I recommend using a DPS who can help keep the bosses going down at the same rate. For example, Golbez, Garland, Squall, Cloud, Fujin, Sephiroth, yes, I said Sephiroth, and the most honorable mention for the ones who want to go through pure torture, you can also solo this Lufinia with the savior herself, Lightning. Though I'd only recommend Lightning solo to those players who are confident with their abilities. Now as you get them down to about 30% eh, or so, these bosses have another trick up their sleeve. Normally their all attacks haven't been that detrimental up to this point, but they each will do an earthquake attack that can seriously hurt or even instantly kill at minimum 2 of your units depending on their HP. And with the HP damage for your completion being at 8000, this could spoil the whole run unfortunately. However, if you happen to have a character like Golbez, or even a friend unit Golbez, and you see the all attack, burst with that Golbez right away, as this will freeze their brave to zero and basically nullifying all that damage. Though if you don't have Golbez, try to survive with a lot of overhealing with someone like Pallet and Cecil or Hope. And then, pray the damage your characters take isn't enough to wipe anyone out and just heal everyone back up before the fight ends. You could use Aerith to help with this, as she can heal everyone up to full HP with Healing Wind, but Aerith can't mitigate Brave damage or HP damage, so I'll leave using her to your own judgment. 
And with that being said, it's a straight shot after this to the finish line. These bosses look like they have a lot, but just take every mechanic they do have one at a time, and this will make it way easier on your team. And there you have it, two dead camel thingies. Congratulations on your 20 armor tokens and 10 upgrade armor materials. Be sure to join me next time as we take on more Lufinia fights together. I don't know about you guys, but I can honestly say that was a really fun Lufinia fight. I really want to apologize. I know my content hasn't been coming out as much as I want it to, but I promise from now on, every Friday, there will be a new video for Defo, okay? So every Friday from my channel, there will be a Dissidia Opera Omnia video for you guys. Granted, now the content allows it, because of course, if there's nothing new, then there's no video to be had on Friday. But with that being said, guys, I want to go ahead and remind you that the giveaway is still going on for my Vaughn video, so if you haven't watched it, definitely go ahead and do so, and leave a comment on the video on who you'd like me to cover next within my Rise and Fall series, so that way you can be entered in the giveaway to win at least a $50 gift card for iOS or Android, or a $100 gift card if I happen to reach 200 subscribers before October 18th. Thank you so much for watching today's video, I really do appreciate it, guys. And as always, I'll see you next time.